common enemy. Ball pucky. I love it. I was just, you know, making conversation. How's it going folks, Jack here with another reaction. So I have been asked by many to watch Kane's Wrath review by Bricky and the answer is no. What? Well, at least not yet. I'm currently playing through it because that was something that I was supposed to do last year. Didn't manage to do that, but uh, we can check out the one that I actually finished, which is Red Alert 3, which is kind of surprising because both games came out on the same year. I didn't manage to do that and make them both so different because Kane's rap is way more serious and I think that's the reason why I'm struggling to get through it. But let us jump into the sheer and exquisite shenanigans of Red Alert 3. I won't let you have the satisfaction of catching me. <laughs> I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! Space! Tim Curry what a is legend. going to space. In space, there is no capitalism. But particularly, if he's going to the moon, well, well, what else is not on the moon? Atmosphere. No atmosphere, no protection from the sun. Those rays oh, are going to be no. blasting him no. like crazy. Radi Bruh. Yo, this is the kind of joke that we expect from Seth and Maxor. <laughs> well, okay, we're getting... Uh we're getting crispy. Radiation, new levels. And you know what that means? It means he needs our sponsor today, Blender's Eyewear. Bricky fact. Magenta is my favorite color, but purple is pretty up there. And right here, I hmm, see. smooth. No matter where I'm at, the beach, the mall. A pimp's color. Or in my own home right here, these things have got me covered. Check the description now if you want to cop yourself some of their fantastic choices. And let's talk about Tim Curry. Hello, everybody. My name is Bricky, currently doxing any and all allied players using cryocopters. <laughs> so it seems my prior video on Kane's Wrath yeah. reached out into the void of YouTube and grabbed all of its <laughs> players out of their geriatric homes to reminisce on the good times of that fantastic game. The good old days back when video games were fun. It's funny that we hear that so often today. I just generally... I think that you can still find amazingly amazing good games that are still being released to this day. To this day! You just need to look for them. I had a whole lot of, I've never seen your content, Bricky, but Kane's Wrath was my shit. And God damn it, I'm glad we have that in common. So I'm nothing if not business oriented. So why not talk about another Command & Conquer game? The last decent one and the last <laughs> one before EA completely crushed its Com franchise. Bruh, Command & Conquer 4. Man and Conquer Red Alert 3 that came out very quickly after Kane's Wrath. Red mm -hmm. Alert 3, the final Red Alert game of the beloved Red Alert series of Command and Conquer, because there's a couple of variations of it, Generals and Tiberium Wars and Red Alert. And yeah. the third game came out in 2009. Eight. And it came out right after Kane's Wrath, which I won't lie, gave me a little bit of whiplash. Red Alert 3 <laughs> might be the polar opposite of the Tiberium Wars games. While Tiberium Wars focused a bit more on macro, this game focused a lot more on micro. micro. In Tiberium Wars, while it was still a little cheesy, it took its topic somewhat seriously. Oh yeah, In Red Alert 3, it is, is all farce. It is all memes. While the all characters the and units sounded somewhat grounded in Tiberium Wars, in Red Alert, it's... Kill them like watermelon! It is a total <laughs> fucking parody. However, that doesn't make it bad. It makes no. it specific. It dedicates itself to a particular audience. Those who prefer the micro gameplay, those who prefer the art style and the voice acting and the cheese. Red Alert 3 is a game that I don't believe many people consider to be nearly as good as 1 and 2, because while I did not play Red Alert 1 and 2, I do hear a lot of, uh, it's... It's not quite the same, but mm -hmm. it is still a classic source of fun over balance, fun over overall, well, function and health. And that's not always a bad thing. You can't point at Modern Warfare 2, one of the most popular games ever, my childhood, Zombie and tell mode. me, yeah, Bricky, that game was balanced. One of the best uh, no. FPS games ever made, Titanfall, Titanfall 2, 2, is an yeah. unbalanced mess. At least when you get <laughs> really good at it, but it is still goddamn fun. 
with one of the best stories ever. Goddamn well. fun. It might actually be having too much fun. And we'll talk about that in the campaign. Nixon was framed and Kennedy was a commie? <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. Disclaimer. Deals with Soviets, very evil, crazy Russians, Imperial Japan, all this kind of stuff. Ah, the release date of the video. Yep. Russia, modern time, things going on right now in the world. It's not something I'm going to bring up. It's not something that actually matters in the context of this review. And this discussion of the game will be as if it's not happening. But I wanted to say it because we're all adults here. And I wanted to at least make it clear that... Uh, you know, elephant in the room. Okay, got it. anyway. So, the Russians invent time travel. <laughs> Soviet Union is on the brink of collapse, and Tim Curry... Uh, and they decided to use the their time machine to travel back to Brussels Sprouts in 1927 and assassinate Albert Einstein. This changes the course of history, as nuclear warfare was never invented, and then Tim Curry becomes the new uh, prime minister or supreme prime minister or whatever of the Soviet Union, and the Russians are about to control the entire Western world. They are on the brink of victory instead of collapse, thanks to their assassination of Albert, Albert Einstein. Einstein. However, Which, with by the way, I mean, he was not part of the Manhattan Project. People should remember that. So he had no workings in there because he was strongly against the atom bomb. So I guess a better person to go after should have been the likes of Oppenheimer. But I guess most people are not going to get that. As a kid, you don't know who the hell that is. So you can't really associate Anyways, forget the ramble. No Albert Einstein means no nukes. And, well, no nukes means a certain other nation didn't have any setbacks. So, a combination of technologically advanced, feudal, and imperial Japan, known as the Empire of the Rising Sun, is now a massive force. They are mm -hmm. technologically superior, have crazy new stuff coming around, and they believe that world domination is their divine Destiny. destiny and they have begun yeah. a three-way world war between the soviets the allies and the empire of the rising sun the plot is just straight up shenanigans the entire thing is a vehicle for some of the dumbest dialogue ever written and some of the most school level play acting you can get it is <laughs> dude the allied campaign is so much fun it's just like every actor that they hide in there were just supposed to say whatever you want but Try not to laugh. It was an entire try not to laugh challenge. Riding that thin line of hilarious and cringy and constantly falls <laughs> on both sides all the time. They decided to populate the entire main cast with either A-list celebrities or supermodels. All yeah. the in-game commandos are straight up supermodels in this <laughs> game. They are the stereotype of each one. The Allies have a double pistol Danya. wielding blonde bombshell. The Soviets have the strong, tough sniper Dragunov Natasha Commando. And the Japanese have a schoolgirl outfit, pigtails, angry, angsty young girl with psychic powers. And the cast, holy fuck the cast. You've got Tim Curry doing this Russian accent thing. You've got J.K. Simmons as the president of the united states that works so well regardless of the fact that he was a robot but that worked so well jonathan price is a field marshal george takai is the fucking emperor rick flair is the goddamn <laughs> commander and and david hasselhoff is the uh, vice, vice president. president and the shit they say we have all to the space-time continuum Peter Stromer. Oh, a Come on, you don't even give a, a, a mention to Peter Stromer. He's a goddamn legend. Common enemy. More pucky. I love it. I was just, you know, making conversation. Our enemy was thrusting deeply into the motherland's tender nether regions. Los Angeles is the hub of the Allied propaganda machine. <laughs> <laughs> Freedom, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Apple, Apple pie. pie. Did yeah. I say freedom? Well, well it's worth saying again. again. <laughs> I will root out the enemy within. <laughs> you to are laugh. made of stupid. The sheer volume of A-list actors in oh, this I thing, love this game. in like the complete farce that it is. You can tell none of them are taking it seriously. Tim Curry is consistently laughing at his voice lines. 
And those are the takes they kept. It's surreal. Like, J.K. Simmons is actually a, a Japanese robot spy that they infiltrated to become the president. And then George Takei just, like, rips out some wires and J.K. Simmons has a fucking meltdown. The ending of the <laughs> Allied campaign has one of the, the briefing ladies, I forget her name, I think it's Jenna, Jenna Atkinson, uh, Jenna Atkinson. whoever, and the supermodel Commando, both dressed up to take you out on a, on a hot <laughs> date tonight. That's the ending of the Allied campaign. I couldn't the choose. Japanese campaign, same thing, but on a beach. And you know what's the best part about this? It translates over to gameplay. Mm -hmm. It's just as silly with its style and its units. So a bit ago, there was a Mario game. I forget which one, right? And Mario had a sombrero. And then oh, a whole bunch no. of pasty ass fucking college students that looked uh. like me made a whole bunch of journal articles about why it's super fucking racist, you know, because they had nothing better to do with their time. And then yeah. right after that, all of the fans from like Mexico and stuff of Mario yeah. were like, yo, that's fucking that's dope. cool. Because they got a sombrero. And it made them all look like total clowns. I feel like this game is that same test, just edgier. All of the <laughs> factions are insane stereotypes. Everything, the allies, the Russians, and the Japanese. They are all incredibly stereotypical. Sometimes in a good way, sometimes in certainly an offensive way, but mm -hmm. in a funny way. Red Alert 3 likes its stereotypes. It likes them a lot and it uses them everywhere. Like I asked some Russian friends of mine about like what they thought about Red Alert 3 when it came out, that super evil Russian stereotype. Uh, that is apparently it was generally well received. They, they call it um, Klukva. What, Klukva? Cool. Klukva? Uh, I, I'm pronouncing this very poorly, but but just that super over the top. E I gotta say it. I've gotta say it. Kokainum. God, I love that movie. Evil Russian stereotype. And apparently it's kind of funny because Red Alert is absolutely that. The Soviets, which are my personal favorite of the three factions, have war bears. They have conscripts with AKs and Molotovs. They have gulag flak troopers. They have the hammer tank and the sickle yep, walkers. Their tank. engineer is just. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was my good lung. The submarine sounds like it's gonna sink at basically any moment. What's that tripping sound? Are the scanners working? And oh, we can't forget about the Kirov airship. Oh, Kirov. Another oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. The volume of like Soviet pride is so funny, but. Their patriotism is actually kind of cool. The sheer patriotism in some of their units is really fun to listen to, particularly the Soviet Dreadnought, who just has some of the best voice lines. Can you feel the Soviet might? The enemies of the Union shall burn. And then you got the Apocalypse Tank, who is the whole thing. The yeah. apocalypse has begun. We will bury them. Moving over though, the Empire of the Rising Sun is a combination of feudal Japan, Imperial Japan, and anime stereotypes. Dude, beside the uh, obvious uh, Japanese schoolgirl. Is it time for recess? The Empire's engineer. Oof. That woke. Now that, that's something. You've got units that go the anti-infantry route where you have jets that kind of skim around but then can turn into jets and fly around or bipedal helicopters that fire missiles, enormous oni mechs, and also tsunami tanks that literally scream the word cavalry. You've got like <laughs> Nagi yeah, yeah, yeah. cruisers and shogun battleships. The average Imperial warrior has a gun, but also a laser <laughs> katana saber. that he can charge you with. And for the anime part, you know, besides the oni mechs and, and mecha, you also have like rocket angels and the commando. Also, you have the engineer, which I mean, look at look that at walk that. cycle. Look at that run cycle. I actually like their style quite a lot. High-tech Japanese is a pretty common thing to do because it's just a high-tech country. But mm -hmm. also at the same time, I like the combination of throwing it with Imperial Japan and having that Imperial Japanese nature to them. They have just one thing that wins every battle. Mecha Tengo. That's it. And literally the only unit that you need to use. Make a tango, let's go. The zealotism they have in their divine right for world domination is very cool, but they also have this sort of professionalism. Certain units, particularly the Shogun Battleship and the Wave Force Artillery, one of my favorites, have this just very like calm, strong demeanor about them. The day of the Shogun has arrived. They will soon bow to our flag. We will take them by force. The Shogunate will be pleased. And then you <laughs> contrast that with 
with things like the Mecha Tengu and the Commando and Rocket Angels, and it becomes really fun. It's a nice hybrid. Fuck, man. The, the Commando's special ability literally creates the Imperial flag. Yeah. Like, <laughs> What else could you ask for? As far as the allies go, they themselves look a bit more generic. Mm -hmm. However, they are basically every single Everything. Western stereotype yeah. and not just America, but also French. like British area combined. The sheer volume of nationalities is actually what's pretty cool about it. You've got your pretty standard like white peacekeeper cop kind of guy with the peacekeeper, the riot shield and the shotgun. Your javelin troopers are all Basically football players, literally saying lines like football players. Sack em. Blitz em. Here comes the Hail Mary. The engineer is a, is a complete fucking dweeb. <laughs> Excelsior, piece of pie. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no. And his jet ski <laughs> as well as the funniest thing ever. They've got a James Bond style spy that can bribe people to- It's all just Team Fortress. That's all it is. Turn traitor. Guardian tanks and multi-gunners are by far the most evil of them all. Like British. Mm-hmm. Hey mate, someone's a little cheesed off. Eat a tip. <laughs> Mirage tanks are incredibly French. Uh -huh. City for <laughs> are Jamaican. Take their guns away. Scramble them eggs. The <laughs> big satellite laser truck is just a call center lady. Anything else I can do for you? One moment, sir. So Athena cannon. Oh my god, that, that shit is so good. Century bombers have that deep southern accent. No more belly aching from them. Oh! <laughs> and aircraft carriers are there to blow your ears out. Aircraft carrier leaving port. Colin Proud. In fact, there's actually a comment on my Kane's Wrath video that I think describes this a lot better than I can. I can't stress enough how important voice acting is in an RTS. You're going to be hearing the same voice clips hundreds of thousands of times, and the best ones are iconic and never leave your head. Dude, what have I been doing this entire video? Just quoting the goddamn sounds. It's so engrossing. It's a great way to put it. When you're building stuff and clicking things and ordering people around, you're going to be hearing those voice lines again and again and again and again and again, and they need to be good or else they're going to be so tiring. Keeping those yeah. sound effects up, keeping that voice acting solid is paramount and it's something that despite the silliness they do incredibly well in this game this actually might be the reason why i enjoy red alert 3 so much despite it being entirely inferior to kane's wrath see red alert's <laughs> gameplay is actually the part i have the biggest problem with there's a lot okay. of things they did to the game that i either don't like on a personal level or simply feel like it's just not well balanced for example like harvesting your resources is massively cut down compared to command and conquer kane's wrath we have multiple refineries and multiple harvesters you literally just place a refinery there and they just go back and forth back and forth back and forth which makes it really really easy but also more punishing if you get rushed in kane's wrath you have your base defenses you have all your things you can make and you can try to defend your harvesters and they might kill one or two harvesters but it doesn't kill your economy in yeah. red alert that's like your only harvester yeah. per field. And you only start with two right next to you. So a common strat, the Vindicator bombers on the allies, fucking pricks, will just go over there and kill them. And now you're not getting any money until you build a new one. And I and that's why the levels tend to just end very quickly. Literally, the Empire's uh, campaign has this point where you have to assault the uh, Shogun's uh, temple or whatever. And the first thing that they do is just to send a barrage of people to destroy your mining operation. You lose so damn quickly. Same thing with the uh, against the allies as well when you play as a Soviet uh, during, what is it again, during the Battle of New York? I don't know how much you've been spending. That, that could really be a detriment. You've only got two harvesters. What if they kill both? How much should you have to sell in order to get more? Like there's no skill in actually harvesting and there's very little skill needed to get rid of the harvesters. Soviet mm. terror drones are a nightmare when it comes to that crap. Also, the game foregoes any and all upgrades. There are no upgrades to buy, no rail guns or blue purifying mm. flame, nothing like that. And all of your special like side abilities come from a tech tree that you need to pick around on the bottom left corner of the screen. And some of those are just flat out Fuck. better than others. So yeah. some of those tech tree ability things are kind of cool. You got like the chrono shift from the allies or the toxic bomb from the Soviets or the actual zero plane kamikaze. kamikaze. 
uh, for the, the Imperial Japan. But, you know, they're, they're interesting, but they're not quite the same. And they don't offer as much utility and intrigue as they yeah, do in Kane's Wrath. Shit. But the game also has become more micro heavy. Every single unit, they decide to give a special ability. And some of these abilities range from we had to pick something to absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> like Harvesters, for example. The Allies one allows them to go ahead and move their base. It's an outpost ability. Whereas mm. the Soviet one gives it a big shell to make it tankier. And the Empire one that turns around, stops harvesting, has a little gun on the top. The Imperial Warriors put their guns away and charge it with their laser katana. The Conscripts take their AKs down and throw Molotovs. Hydrofoils swap from their anti-air gun to a gun that stops oh. the enemy units from firing at all, like a jammer, which is really aggravating. Like the apocalypse tank the grabs worst. someone, pulls them in, and shreds them down. Everything has an ability. The thing is, is that that makes it a hell of a lot more micro heavy which mm. I'm less of a fan of. I do feel like in Red Alert, once your opponent gets rid of your major fighting force, you're kind of done. There's a lot of comebacks in Kane's Wrath, and I think it has to do with the speed of the game and the map yeah. size. Red Alert maps feel really small, really small, but things are still decently quick. In Kane's yeah, Wrath, the maps right are way bigger and things aren't decently quick. So there's still lots of time to recover. Well, it's basically RTS version of Magwaria. That's, a, that's what Kane's Wrath feels like. I don't know if that's a good comparison, but that's the one that popped out in my head. I have many a times just been rushed by twin blades and that was my death. <laughs> that was it. It was over. I have yeah. been rushed by dolphins that can't allow me to go anywhere in the sea. The Japanese mecha tangus just destroy everything I know and love. The Twin blades are also insane though. They can carry tanks with them to anywhere. So uh, you're kind of screwed. But they are still not worse than the cryocopters from the Allies. Vindicators on the Allies. There are many times where I feel like my games are ending incredibly quick. Terror drone spam from the Soviets. <laughs> the games just don't feel like they can turn around as quickly. So at the end of the day, you've got a streamlined system where there are no upgrades. Your powers are all in a tier system and everything is more micro heavy instead of macro. That could be how Red Alert's always been. And if that's the case, then I mean, totally fine. But that many a times just been rushed by twin blades and that was my death. That was it, it was over. I have been rushed by dolphins that can't allow me to go anywhere in the sea. The Japanese mecha tangus just destroy everything I know and love. The vindicators <laughs> on the allies. There are many times where I feel like my games are ending incredibly quick. Terror drone spam from the Soviets. The games just don't feel like they can turn around as quickly. So at the end of the day, you've got a streamlined system where there are no upgrades. Your powers are all in a tier system and everything is more micro heavy instead of macro. That could be how Red Alert's always been. And if that's the case, then I mean, totally fine, but that's not for me. I like mm -hmm. Kane's Wrath a lot for all the opposite reasons of what I just said. Red Alert for me is completely held up by its great voice acting and also very good visuals. Look oh, at the yeah. water effects in this game. It came out in 2009. The lighting effects, especially the amount of color Thanks, but... is something it does really well. And also, oh my God, the soundtrack. I didn't even mention the soundtrack. <gasps> Get the montage. Uh, I was I wasn't too fan of this one. This one was pretty dope in the intro. Just the main menu. Hell's Marsh. This one. I remember asking my chat which faction is the strongest in Red yeah, Alert comparatively to everything else, and they all unanimously said the Allies. And it kind of made me confused for a while why the Allies. Like, I know Peacekeepers are strong. I know that the Vindicator spam is Athena good, cannons, but cryocopters. Why specifically the Allies? And they all said Spies. cryocopters. And I watched some pro games, and yeah, cryocopters are dumb. They run up to something, freeze it, and then said thing can basically be one shot by anything in the game, no matter matter what, and it can't fight back, does not matter the size. It also has a shrink ray, which makes said thing incredibly tiny, do almost no damage, and be like triple, like triple as weak. It is infuriating what I have watched with allied cryocopters. The allies look so overpowered. Their aircraft carriers are also 
insane. Assault destroyers, when used properly, can be kind of nuts. Oh, the, just peacekeeper spam, weirdly enough, seems really good. Their <laughs> Apollo fighters just fuck. And it's not to say that everything else doesn't have some good stuff. Mecha Tangus are pretty good. Those actually Wave Force artillery can be pretty nuts too. And, mm -hmm. and the Empire has the best naval combat by far. Soviets, terror drones are really scary. Twin Blades are good. Kirovs are still good. But even so, like the allies yeah they seem a bit over the sauce. and there could be mods and stuff to make this a little bit better i haven't actually seen any personally but i don't know if i would be able to because the allies they yeah. seem a bit overtuned and there could be mods and stuff to make this a little bit better i haven't actually seen any personally but i don't know if i would be able to because you can't really play multiplayer in this game Nay. yeah it's like broken or down or something Didn't even you need to download mods or something to even play multiplayer because ea what's that we put out a product and it's not working well bye it's too bad too because i know there's a lot of people who don't like this game they're just not a fan of this red alert but i do enjoy it it's a lot of fun it's good for a couple of rounds of enjoying myself and being kind of silly and different and interesting <laughs> it's nowhere near as good as kane's wrath to me but i also don't like some of the changes it made so you know it could be a personal preference overall though despite everything there it does still feel like that era before the loot boxes before the just make our money back era where despite it being ea and despite all their dumbassery it is a game that was made with care it's dumb it's cheesy it's stupid but it's meant fun. to be and it's fun for that it is fun over balance to a t and honestly i'm really sad it's the last real command and conquer game it is the one that mm. put it in well it's not the one that put it in its grave but it is the one right before it went to a grave it was its final hurrah and it's not the best but it's better than what they've been making so yeah don't you guys Red have Alert three, tim curry looking at ass vine, vine boom, boom sound effect <laughs> Thank you all for watching this video. It was a pleasure having you all here. <laughs> if you want to check out some merch, I have some new ones. I have a new shirt that I entirely based around Outer Wilds, one of my favorite games of all time. I think it's really solid and distinct enough, and I, I just love it. You can check that out. And also, I have an Elden Ring one, and it says Got Grace. It's in hoodies, black <laughs> and white, as well as shirts, black and white. You can both check those out in the description, orchidate.com. And uh, I have some questions. All right, I got two questions. Have I heard of the subreddit Armored Women? No, but I'm, I'm fucking gonna. Yeah, Red Alert 3 is just a very good game. And speaking of EA right now, who would have thought that in this day and age, in the last couple of years, they've been the ones that are moot. They've barely started any drama. Actually, recently, I thought about getting Dead Space D remake. I, I still haven't gotten it, but it has gotten so many good reviews. So uh, perhaps, perhaps I should play that as well. But guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. As always, please do go and subscribe to Break His Channel, like this video, and of course, if you like this one here, this reaction, give the video a like, and of course, subscribe if you want to see some more. That said, we should all have a wonderful day. See you guys in the next one. Bye.